This video was sponsored by Squarespace. Even to this day, many guys will still cite Brad Pitt in Fight Club as having the ideal male physique. Maybe a younger audience, though, might say Toji Fushiguro from Jujutsu Kaisen. People seemed to really resonate with that character, and there are lots of videos and posts proclaiming that Toji has the perfect anime physique. Toji's physique looks appealing because it's athletic. And to look athletic, you just have to be athletic, which means you need to do athletic stuff. But the point is, most people don't want to be muscular hulks. They just want abs, a lower body fat percentage, and some decent athleticism. And they may have been led to believe that this is very difficult to achieve, complicated even. And there's a high chance they've followed countless training programs trying to achieve just that, only to get stuck and find themselves back at square one. Here's the thing though, it's actually really easy to achieve this kind of physique, and fun, and you can do it in no time at all, and you'll build more athleticism along the way, if you use this strategy. So the best way to do it is probably nothing like what most fitness mags, YouTube channels, or even health experts would have you believe. You don't need to join a gym. You don't need to optimize your lifting technique. You don't need to starve yourself. Just play tennis. Or, you know, football, or do rock climbing. Ooh, or dance, better yet. Seriously, for most people, this will be enough to get into shape in no time at all. Not those specific activities, just picking a sport or a hobby and doing it. An hour and a half of sports, three times a week, that's a ton of cardio for most people. That's gonna be enough to start reducing body fat percentage over time. And the thing is, it's actually really fun too, because you pick a sport or hobby that you really like and do that. So you stick at it. For bonus points, make it an activity that doesn't involve too much commuting or setup. Find a club near you. For even more bonus points, do not one, but two or three different hobbies or sports. Choose something maybe that will burn lots of calories and train the legs like football, dance, cycling, martial arts, tennis, even hiking. Then something that will build pulling strength like swimming or rock climbing. And something that will train your pushing strength, swinging or throwing strength. For example, boxing, tennis or hand balancing. Yes, I know all of them do everything to an extent, and so it doesn't really matter too much if this isn't a perfect split. Doing martial arts and swimming is plenty good enough for most people. Just try and get some variety. No, swimming isn't optimal for muscle growth. And no, footballers don't have massive arms. But there's a good chance this doesn't matter at all to your aesthetic goals or to your athleticism. It is only tribalism and the expectations of others that fool us into thinking those things matter. Is that what a man looks like? <laughs> It's only dogged adherence to a singular training style that makes optimization an issue. If you do want a little extra muscle, then a simple bodyweight program or some weightlifting on the side will help you to get there. Again, keeping it simple. Because now you can rest assured knowing that your cardio, rotational movement, explosiveness, and more are likely handled by your chosen sport. So you can just top up your arms and traps and be done with it. Doing martial arts and swimming is plenty good enough for most people. Just try and get some variety. This not only develops a more rounded physique, but it also prevents imbalances or overuse injuries that can come from focusing all your efforts on a single endeavor. In terms of your diet, increase your protein intake a little if you want to build some muscle, or cut your calories a little if you want to look leaner. And yes, it really is that easy for most people to start getting this highly desirable body shape while having fun. And this routine will also give you more energy and a bunch of new skills. So if it's that easy, then why do so many people struggle? Let's say you want to get a little bit fitter and start looking more like Toji. So then you might look up on YouTube how to build big muscle or how to burn fat or how to get into shape, how to get a six pack maybe. Then you follow some basic advice and start consuming more content that that channel is putting out. Thing is, you don't realize that's actually a bodybuilding channel or a powerlifting channel, not just a general fitness channel. Deadlifts, squats and bench won't get you Toji's body for a long time. Powerlifters are pretty much always bulking. That's all after you've actually learned the movement pattern to perform something like a deadlift safely. This is sports specific training and the top athletes of the sport don't look like someone like Toji or Brad Pitt. Bodybuilding might get you there a bit faster, but you'll be cutting and bulking and following confusing splits. You'll be creating lots of soreness and dedicating large amounts of time and energy to the pursuit. So there's a high chance you'll burn out and end up back at square one. 
This all requires lots of equipment and time. It leaves you exhausted and achy, and you'll probably become frustrated that it takes years to look anything like those people. And of course, it's in the best interest of the fitness industry to make that so. To show you pictures of guys with huge biceps and tree trunk legs, whether or not those people are actually healthy or what you wanted to look like to begin with. And the dedication to this new hobby will invariably ignore other aspects of your fitness. A bodybuilder or powerlifter often won't do much cardio. Certainly the gym bro YouTubers won't recommend it. And they'll rarely move in the frontal or transverse planes. They don't run or jump or cut or crouch. They only lift weights in a repetitive movement pattern in a sterile environment. Straight up and straight back down. Using thin bars with convenient handles. And as they get more advanced, they need even more specific equipment, tools and strategies to optimize themselves towards a goal that won't really serve most people. If you can already deadlift 500 pounds, do you really need to deadlift more? Should something else not be the priority at this point? It's the same with so many other things. If, if you're playing football and you're cutting and changing direction and running, you're, you're, build, you're improving your hip mobility in like this gentle and natural way in all of these different angles that you're not expecting. So actually, in some ways, you're the better athlete than the guy who's who's insanely strong or whatever because you're more adaptable. And if it came to like playing a sport or or moving furniture or doing anything that's realistic, you might actually end up outperforming the guy who's dedicated their life and their personality to fitness. Another great example about that is say people that want to do bodybuilding and they take it to the extreme. They use straps on literally every pulling exercise. Well, if, if you want to have, you know, function, we'll use that word, you got to have some element of grip strength. So just by doing your pulling exercise without straps, you'll hypertrophy your forearms, you'll increase your crushing grip. Granted, yeah. you won't be able to, you know, take your back to absolute muscular failure on everything if you don't use straps. Yeah. But this is just another way of thinking about, okay, how can I still do training, but get tangible side benefits, you know, running barefoot, are doing pulling exercise without straps and stuff like that and that's, and that's the point where where often the things that would make you elite are actually ironically the things that are making you less capable overall as a all rounder well, because that's like a the, mic drop there these specialists often aren't prepared for what happens when they slip and fall as they get bigger they might start to lose mobility or get winded climbing the stairs whereas the guy who just plays sports and follows hobbies will be used to sprinting jogging jumping anticipating the opponent they'll be used to dealing with momentum getting barged, they won't be as likely to run out of breath or twist their ankle. So don't tell me that that won't build muscle. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter as much as you think for performance, and it doesn't matter as much as you think for the vast majority starting out at the gym. Someone who swims will have a decent level of strength that won't gas out after a minute of exertion. Someone who climbs will have an extremely powerful grip, meaning they can actually lift more heavy stuff out in the real world that doesn't have a nice handle. The dancer will have amazing coordination, and mobility and rhythm. Now, of course, I say this is easy, but how easy it is is going to depend on how easy it is for you to attend a club or start a hobby, you know, three or four or five times a week. I know for me personally, that's quite tricky, made more difficult by the fact that I am something of an introvert. So all I'm really saying here is that if you have the time, what time you would dedicate to the gym, you might also consider dedicating to a sport or a physical hobby instead and you might actually find that this is more fun for you and that you actually get closer to your goals not only because you're able to stick at it better but also because you know this is more what makes you fit and if you're looking for an athletic type body like Toji and he does have an athletic body by anime standards he's not bulky he's more slim and lean then this might actually help you get there faster one good way of looking at it is like this if you're interested in fitness itself for its own sake then of course go to the gym start bodybuilding calisthenics powerlifting whatever else if you just want to be fit then consider just taking up a sport or something else that you enjoy doing that's active just to be absolutely crystal clear i'm not claiming that just by doing some football and some swimming you're necessarily going to look exactly like toji or brad pitt for that matter what i am saying though is that you can get into really good shape by just pursuing any athletic endeavor and that this might actually gel more closely with your actual goals than some of the internet might lead you to believe obviously i can't guarantee you're going to look like toji i can't guarantee you're going to look like anyone everybody's different you've got different proportions different insertions different metabolisms so 
trying to look like anybody is a fool's errand, really. But like I say, it's about knowing precisely what your goals are before you start. And also, not listening to the echo chambers that you're going to find online. Because whilst you might be led to believe that the whole world is out there doing these massive PRs on the big three lifts and getting into insane shape with visible ab veins, the reality is just not that. In fact, most people, if you tell them how much you can bench or deadlift, they won't even know if it's good or not. Most people won't necessarily want to look like a pro bodybuilder. The average person is going to be very happy with a more natural looking athletic physique. And the best way for them to go about doing that is just by doing sports and having fun. And all this, even if they only pursue these things as a hobby. Not only did they achieve that lean but toned physique, that toji physique in a shorter time frame, they also became a better all round athlete than the people who made fitness their whole personality. The unpredictable and chaotic nature of that sport or hobby made them far more well-rounded and adaptable, left fewer gaps in that performance profile. And the more elite the gym rat becomes, the more this becomes true. Which is extremely ironic. Pursuing fitness as a hobby is amazing. There's so much to learn. I've loved every minute of going to the gym. But fitness does not equate to gym. Not enough people are out there telling beginners that if they just want to look a bit more toned, feel more energetic and prepare themselves for more situations, it's actually really easy. You don't need a degree, you don't even need a gym membership. Find something you enjoy and do it. Bye for now. By the way guys, this video was sponsored by Squarespace. Squarespace is the all-in-one website building platform that helps entrepreneurs to stand out and succeed online. It's perfect for everyone, from absolute beginners to big businesses. In fact, many of the biggest brands on the web use Squarespace. Getting started is extremely easy. With a new design intelligence feature, Squarespace can now use AI to assist in that website design, creating something truly unique and perfectly catered to your needs. And from there, you can take advantage of many more advanced features. If you sell a service, you can use invoicing to get paid for your services. You can sell custom merchandise handled entirely through Squarespace, or even use paid memberships to generate revenue from your existing content. The sky is the limit. So to find out more, head to squarespace.com. And when you're ready to launch, go to squarespace.com forward slash Bioneer for 10% off your first website or domain. Thanks again to Squarespace for sponsoring this video. And bye for now.